Jackson, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for a, a great talk in an overall fascinating session. The, the question that I have for you is how close are we to uh, clinical applicability of uh, these techniques? It looks like science fiction to me, so uh, uh, how, how close are we? Uh, what can you tell, tell us about that? I, I think we're uh, very close in terms of uh, some of the simple uh, tissues such as skin, flat tissues. Uh, we're bioprinting skin now in multiple layers with multiple cell types. Um, th those are, uh, are, are easy to do. Uh, the, the next step is uh, tubular shapes, uh, urethra, blood vessels. I think we're, we're fairly close on that as well. Uh, the, the, the area that we have a lot of work to do on is the solid organ uh, bioprinting, and that's a huge challenge. So I think we'll take this at a step-by-step -step process. Yeah, I understand. I guess that uh, bioprinting uh, a structure that is more or less inert is one thing, but moving to the next uh, stage of, uh, of actually printing uh, life uh, at the, the cellular level and even further uh, printing function, we're talking there, I guess, about uh, genes, uh, gene activation. How, how do you th envision that you can do that? For me, it seems that it's almost impossible. Well, one of the things we can do with bioprinting is not only put cells and bioink uh, into uh, a 3D structure, we can also put bioactive molecules such as cytokines, chemokines, um, maturation factors, growth factors that can uh, enhance uh, the function of these cells once we uh, have the structure bioprinted. And once we implant that, then it has the potential of uh, increasing the growth and maturation rate of the cells we put into the uh, printed structure, but also potentially bringing in endogenous cells as well to help heal that site. I understand. So when we are printing uh, like a Xeroxing uh, um, a text, what you, you need ink and paper. So what, what do you need to bioprint an, uh, an organ? Right. Uh, we, uh, right now, is, uh, we, we're using a, a combination uh, of materials. First is the bioink, and that's where we place our cells within that material. It's a softer material. It can be cross-linked to stiffen it up once it's bioprinted, but it's still not strong enough to, to maintain complete structure and even to be sutured into a, a, a wound site. Uh, so we use other materials that are potentially synthetic, um, and uh, we can use that as structural support, and we use an integrated uh, bioprinting system uh, where we can, at the same time, print the structural component, the synthetic materials, as well as printing the bioink that's containing the cells. That's <laughs> that this is this is amazing. Um, how? How little do you, how small do you uh, do you bioprint? Do you uh, can you bioprint DNA? Right now we can't uh, bioprint DNA per se. Uh, we can uh, bioprint cells very readily, and uh, from there uh, we can uh, use that and place these cells in specific locations within our construct. Uh, so we can print multiple cell types. Uh, and then we can place, like I said before, the bioactive materials, and we can place those at specific spots within the construct itself. And depending on your application, you have a lot of options that you can use. When you bioprint a cell, what do you bioprint? Bio do you have the, uh, the an opting out uh, possibility? Do you, do you bioprint uh, HLA antigen at the surface of the cell or not? No, <laughs> we, do, we, we can't get to that uh, uh, fine of detail. Uh, right now we use a pneumatic system and extrusion bioprinting system. And we can print down to uh, about 100 microns in uh, resolution. 300 to 100 microns is uh, the, the level of resolution that we can get with that, that type of system. Uh, other systems that I mentioned in, in the earlier talk uh, and, and using some of the uh, uh, piston-driven, we can get down to smaller, potentially uh, uh, down to uh, 550 microns or, or, or less. But avoiding to uh, bioprint the uh, histocompatibility antigen, in fact, is good because you will have no rejection. So are we heading towards a solution where you will have uh, organs for all, no more organ shortage and no rejection? 
Well, we, th that's one of the things we're working toward. And, and one of the projects, interestingly, that we have at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine is uh, trying to engineer the thymus. So if we can actually do that, we can potentially completely manipulate the immune system and have donor-specific tolerance induction. And, and that, that's the goal of solid organ transplant. <laughs> oh wow, my gosh, don't go too far, you're making me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is news that I had no idea about. So, we are going to, uh, to change the source of, uh, of, uh, of the organs we are transplanted if, we, uh, if this uh, moves to uh, clinical reality. So, do you think that uh, procuring surgeons will be uh, changed by uh, lab technicians and engineers in order when we yeah. achieve that? I, I think we'll, we'll have the, uh, uh, the technical aspects associated with the bioprinting, but we still need the surgeons. We have to get that bioprinted construct into the patient in a reliable and safe way, and the surgeons have all of that, that talent. And so uh, we may be able to produce the, the, the tissue uh, or the organ, and then the surgeons are needed to actually okay, implant. But you, you will still um, allow us to, um, to, stay, uh, to stay in bed at night and avoid us to uh, get up in the middle of the night to do, do a procurement, right? Uh, that, that would be a, a, a good goal in terms of the, uh, the, the surgeons. Okay. So... If we invite you again at ESOT for, uh, for one of these uh, plenary sessions, do you think that one day you will be able to, uh, to uh, Xerox uh, a functional kidney live on the stage while you are delivering your speech? And how long will it take before that happens? Well, I, I, I think uh, we're going to be a little ways away from actually <laughs> uh, bioprinting a, a functional kidney. It's very complex, multiple cell types. Uh, right now is our biggest hurdle is vascularization. So once we get that figured out, uh, then I think we're, we're on our way. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Thank Jackson. You. Very much enjoyed your, show, yeah. your talk and enjoyed talking to you. Thank Good you. Good evening.